Okay, so this is our last lecture on uh, the skull, and we're going to be looking at what it goes in and out of these foramina after Sean's so carefully gone through everything. Thank you, Sean. So, let's have a closer look here at the skull. So, this is the inside of the skull, and just to recap again, this was your anterior cranial fossa. This is your middle cranial fossa. Climbing up here. And this is your posterior cranial fossa coming down like that. So let's look at your anterior cranial fossa. And we talked about the penthouse suite, so we're talking about things which are concerned with smelling. So you come out the penthouse suite in the morning and you have a sniff of the morning air. So what holes and structures do we have here? Well, we've got this hole up here. This is the foramen cecum, and cecum means a blind end in sac, blind end in sac, foramen cecum, and through that is where, where we have um, emissary veins going through. Now emissary is something which you send out as a messenger. So this is where you send out, so when this whole cranial vault um, becomes um, too high in pressure on the venous side, you can let off a little bit of steam, so you can send off some blood down these veins, which is your emissary veins, just to reduce the pressure. Otherwise, you're effectively carrying a homemade bomb in your very own head. Just imagine that. The next thing we have is we have these two areas here, um, and as Sean pointed out, your factory bulbs sit here. This is a sieve. Sib, the Latin word for sieve, is cribriform. So this is your cribriform plate. And through it are tiny little holes, and there are projections from these two bulbs that sit alongside here, which then percolate through these tiny holes into the top part of the nose. The top part of the nose belongs to the brain, so it's all to do with smell. And that pretty much covers everything for the anterior cranial fossa. Let's move on to the middle cranial fossa. So coming to the middle cranial fossa, I'll just hold it there if we can see, okay. The middle cranial fossa, we talked about the crescent shape. So we started here with this um, superior orbital fissure coming round onto the foramen rotundum for round, and then we came round onto foramen ovale, and then we came round onto foramen spinosum. So you can see they're all arranged in a bit of a crescent. Central from the present, you've got foramen lacerum, and then just behind it is um, the carotid canal. So that's that's disappearing through the canal. You can't actually see through the canal because it's a canal. That's not the canal. But these others are foramen, so you can actually see from one side straight through to the other. So let's um, start off talking about the first one. So the first one here, I'm just going to poke these through here, and then you can you can see. So that is, that there is a superior orbital fissure. Now through superior orbital fissure, and that's obviously going to go round into your orbit. So I'm just going to turn this round now. If I turn this round, what you can see there is coming through the superior orbital fissure is that wire I've just placed through. So this is obviously things which are going to come to supply the eye. So what we've got coming to supply the eye is cranial nerve number three, cranial nerve number four, and cranial nerve number um, six, which have to move the muscles of um, the orbit. So that's um, ocular motor for three, trochlea for four, which is going to operate superior oblique, and abducens, which is to abduct the eye, so that is lateral rectus for number six. The other nerve which you have, which you need in the eye around that area, is for sensation and that's the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal, which is going to be V1. So just to turn around now, and we're going to show you again where that's heading in. Okay, superior orbital fissure. Great. Let's move on to the next one now. And the next one, if I just guide this in, it's just tucked in right up in here. This, these, all these holes are actually through the sphenoid bone, so it's a very busy bone, okay? Sphenoid means wedge, and it's the one which is wedged in right in the middle. It's very busy, right in the center of all the action. 
So the hole I've just found there, and I've just placed this wire through, is the optic canal. It is a canal, which means it goes on for a little while, while it's encased on all the sides. Um, and through here runs your optic nerve, which is cranial nerve number two. Also wrapped around it, or with it, runs the ophthalmic artery. Wrapped around the ophthalmic artery, like a climbing tree plant, is your sympathetic nerves and they follow the arterial system. That's how they catch the bus on the way to where they're going to go. So that's your sympathetic nerves which are going to go to the orbit. I'm just going to turn this around now. And when I turn it around, you can probably see there the green wire coming out. And that's that coming out of the sphenoid bone of the optic canal. Okay. Now let's move on. So I'm going to turn this back round and we'll move on to the next hole next hole, if I find it just here, is foramen rotundum. Foramen rotundum. Okay, rotundum, round. There we go, it can't get any more rounder than that. So, foramen rotundum carries the branches of the trigeminal for the maxillary, the nose division. Okay, so that's the V2. And I'm just going to turn that around so that you can see where he's coming out roughly. Now, can you roughly see, just if you look through the orbit and down through the inferior orbital fissure, you can see rotundum poking out on the other side. Okay, I'm just going to turn it onto its lateral surface, so you may be able to appreciate where it's coming out there too. And that's Freeman rotundum, coming out into that pterygopalatine fossa we were talking about before. How interesting. Just bear that in mind, because we'll come back to that shortly. Thank you. Right, I'm going to go back now, and the next hole we're going to find is here. And that is Freeman Ovalley. It's oval, it looks oval. Please don't write anything else in the exams. This is definitely Freeman Ovalley. Okay? I'm going to turn that around so you see on the inferior aspect of the skull where this is. So here we go through, and there we're coming out there. Freeman Oval. Can't get any more oval than that. Okay. That's going to carry with it um, the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Um, that's V3. It's also going to have coming out of there the lesser petrosal nerve, which is carrying parasympathetic fibres of the glossopharyngeal which are heading down into that infratemporal fossa where they're going to find the otic ganglion and give off fibres towards the parotid gland to help with your salivation. The other vessel we've got which is going to be going through there is going to be the accessory meningeal artery. So the accessory meningeal artery is the other vessel that's going to be climbing through there. Right, let's move on. And if I find the next hole, which is this hole here, and you remember Sean earlier just told you about this one, you can easily identify with this groove which is climbing up here, heading towards my terion. Okay, this is that H, which is that Clapham junction of bones on that weak part of the skull. And if you just tap here, which is the rock, which is the petrous part. Listen to the sound. And then if you tap here, this is the squamous part, so it's quite thin here. So that's that terion, and it leads down onto that hole there, which is beside a little spine on this side, but a more prominent spine on the inferior aspect, which is the foramen spinosum and spinosum. So through there comes that artery which presses into the bone to create that groove, which is the middle meningeal artery. So that's the middle meningeal artery that goes through there, and with it comes out the, um, the uh, meningeal nerve, which is coming from the, or the accessory meningeal nerve, which is coming from V3. So V3 would have gone out of Freeman Valley and then done a U-bend 
So that's a frame of the valley there. It would have done a U bend. Just hold him nice and still. I can get him nice and still. There we go. And I find my spine. There's my spine. So that's frame and spine. Those are right next to him. So this is going to do a U bend now and head back in there. And if I turn that over, so that's us there. Are you happy with that? Mm -hmm. So if I turn that over, that's going to be what happens with the meningeal supply from V3 as it comes up through, back through spinosum. So the left through ovale, come back up through, through spinosum. Okay, so two things from spinosum, middle meningeal artery, which is going to climb up, make that groove, and then that accessory meningeal nerve, which is coming back through that hole. Lovely. Let's pull this out. Let's go on to talk about the next hole. So the next hole is this one here. Now this is the one the examiners just love catching the students out with. This is this one here. And that is um, Freeman Lacerum. Lacerum, as Sean mentioned, it's got lacerated edges. You'd be an absolute fool if you were a structure to be trying to dice with death, making your passage away across there. So nothing actually goes through Lacerum. So that's the answer to all exam questions involving Lacerum. Nothing goes through Lacerum. The thing with Lacerum, which is what causes some of the issue in some of the books, is Lacerum is at an angle which means that structures will pass over it, but as they pass over it, they appear as though they're going into it, but nothing actually goes through it, okay? So lacerum is there. If I follow behind from lacerum, if I can just tilt this ever so slightly, you might be able to see behind from lacerum, can you see the opening there? That's my carotid canal. And it's a canal because it's not a frame and I can't see straight through it. I have to go into this bit of a cave first and then I keep going. And if you can see on, on the intracranial surface, I'm going to turn over now. So here we're turning. There it is coming out. And that there will be my carotid canal. Carotid canal. And through the carotid canal is coming the internal carotid artery, which is the blood supply of the brain. Blood supply of the brain, internal carotid artery. Wrapped around it are sympathetic nerves. Sympathetic nerves are wrapped around internal carotid artery. Okay.